o'clock. I'm going to call the meeting to order. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, GL Chapter 30A, Section 18, and the Governor's June 16, 2021 revised order extending remote participation by all members in any meeting of a public body. This meeting, the Great Barrington Select Board will be conducted via remote participation to the greatest extent possible. Specific information and general guidelines for remote participation by members of the public and our parties with a right and a requirement to attend this meeting can be found on the town's website. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure the public can adequately access proceedings in real time via technological means. Pursuant to MGL 7C 30A section 20F, to notifying the chair of the public body, any person may make a video audio recording of an open session of a meeting of a public body or may transmit the meeting through any medium. The beginning of the meeting, the chair shall inform other attendees of any such recording. Uh, this meeting is being recorded by the town, by CTSB, by Bircher Edge and other interested parties. Any members of the public wishing to speak at the meeting must receive permission of the chair. The listing of agenda items and those reasonably anticipated by the chair, which may be discussed at the meeting. Not all items listed may be brought up, uh, may in fact be discussed and other items not listed may be brought up for discussion to the extent permitted by law. Um, I'll start with select board's announcements and statements. Um, Garfield. You're muted, Garfield. Nothing, thank you. You're welcome. Eric? Uh, nothing at this time, thank you. Um, Lee? Nothing. Ed? No, nothing. Thank you. Okay, um, we have one topic tonight, uh, the Housatonic Waterworks discussion. Um, tonight's meeting is one of a series of community mm -hmm. listening meetings hosted by the select board. The topic this evening is the continuing problems with Housatonic Water. We will begin tonight's meeting with a series of updates by the town manager. Then I will open the floor for comments by customers of the Housatonic Water Company. This meeting is solely about Housatonic and the current water situation. The ground rules for tonight are as follows. Like other community meetings, we are here to listen to you. The select board will not be deliberating this evening. We will be listening, although we may ask clarifying questions. Each participant may speak once for a maximum of three minutes. I ask you that you confine your remarks to the current water problems in Housatonic. Please try to keep personalities out of the discussion. I ask that you try not to repeat what others have already said. When you're called on to speak, please give your name and address for the record. To be very clear, the select board believes the residents of Housatonic should have clean water for drinking, bathing, laundry, and cooking. We are very aware of the current state of the water. We know that the state says the water is safe to drink, but we understand why the residents are concerned due to the appearance of the water. We think that water should be safe to drink and aesthetically pleasing. It also should not ruin residents' clothing or stain their bathtubs. We are committed as a board to find a solution to this long standing problem. Mark, go ahead. Hey, Steve. <clears throat> So I'd just like to begin this evening by providing a brief recap for anyone that's joining us for the first time, and then I'll move into some more recent content. Uh, so in 2018, after uh, receiving some royally and discolored water complaints from village residents, the select board hired a consultant to conduct a phase one study. And this mostly consisted of a review of existing conditions with both water systems in town, uh, a really uh, general overview to get a a better sense for what could be occurring. And uh, fast forward now to July of 2020, uh, the board instructed staff uh, last year to hire consultants capable of completing a phase two study. And, and by phase two, I mean studying the existing infrastructure uh, for the historic water work system that is uh, developing a capital improvement plan estimating the costs associated with this capital improvement plan, and then providing us with an estimated value of the Housatonic Water Works system. Uh, those findings were presented to the board and village residents in, in public session in July and August of this year. 
Uh, in addition to this, the board sent letters to the Baker administration, the Department of Public Utilities or DPU, uh, the Department of Environmental Protection, DEP. Uh, and you know we, what we were uh, looking to do is, is seek uh, help from these regulatory agencies uh, on the state level. Last month, we held several working meetings with the various parties involved as, as we had promised uh, back in late August uh, at our last meeting where we focused on this topic. Uh, we met with, since that time, we met with representatives from the GB Fire District, from Housatonic Waterworks. We met with representatives from DPU, DEP, and then our state legislators were involved uh, in addition to a representative from uh, the governor's office. And at this point, we've identified four potential options. Uh, and I think I've covered these once before, but I'd just like to run through them again. Uh, the four potential options that we see uh, on the table at the moment are one, uh, acquire the Houstonic Waterworks system uh, and operate the system as an enterprise fund, meaning that it's a user paid system similar to our wastewater treatment plant. The second option would be to acquire Housatonic Waterworks and then hand the system over for payment or not that has not uh, been determined at this point to an independent water district uh, serving it, its existing customer base. So this would be a similar model to the Great Barrington Fire District at this point, and that would require uh, special legislation and taxing authority. Uh, the third option would be that the town acquires the water system, uh, the Housatonic Waterworks system, and then works with the fire district uh, and their prudential committee to merge or potentially merge those two systems. And then the fourth option would be little or no uh, town involvement at all, which means that the Housatonic Water Works would remain a private entity and the town would work with uh, regulators and Housatonic Water Works to improve water quality through capital improvements to the system. So basically status quo, but uh, with the town playing a more uh, active role than it has in the past. And full disclosure, uh, none of these options will happen overnight, of course, uh, and three of them require that the town acquire the system, which could take several months to years. And it would also require town meeting approval, which, you know, as you are all well aware, that presents its own challenges since uh, the Houston water system serves uh, uh, a, you know, a much smaller portion of the overall town. Uh, so what you can expect to happen now, just a few things. Uh, we'll continue to explore options for the acquisition of this system. That is, uh, I, I think, first and foremost. And, and this means meeting with Houstonic Waterworks, or continuing to meet with Houstonic Waterworks representatives and investigating what other legal pathways are available to us to acquire this system. We will uh, simultaneously seek out potential funding sources for the acquisition and capital upgrades through uh, grants and through other low interest loans. And we've already started having those conversations with our, our legislators and, and asked for help with that. Uh, we'll be exploring filtration options. And uh, you know, I guess the question on the table is, could we utilize a funding source such as the, uh, or a portion of the $2 million in ARPA funds, the American Rescue Act? Uh, Rescue Plan Act to uh, provide grants to impacted homeowners as a short-term solution. Uh, we'll be exploring whether or not assistance from the Massachusetts Attorney's, Attorney General's Office is necessary or would be helpful. And then finally, we'll be working with DPU officials to explore the option of requesting rate relief for Housatonic Waterworks customers. Uh, this is something that we've we've requested in the past and, and something we requested in the earlier letter that I mentioned to DPU uh, from, from 2020, but a formal petition would need to be filed with uh, DPU. We were made aware of that at our uh, recent meeting as well. So I'll continue meeting with uh, officials from the DPU. I, my next meeting with them is next Tuesday uh, to discuss what that path might look like. So we still have a lot of work to do here. Uh, but we are very, very committed to finding long-term solutions. Uh, and before I conclude, I just wanted to uh, take this opportunity to remind everyone of a few more, uh, a few things. Our engineering studies, I know I've said this multiple times, I just want to say it again in case I capture someone new tonight. Our engineering studies can be found on our website, townofgb.org, on the select board page under the tab titled Housatonic Waterworks Information. There's a, a, a whole... Uh, 
the whole um, group of uh, emails and uh, sorry documents and reports and and whatnot uh, listed in that tab. So uh, if you if you're looking for anything uh, in particular, that would be the place to go. If you cannot find something you are looking for, feel free to reach out to my office and we can provide that. Uh, and lastly, uh, Housatonic Waterworks will be hosting an informational session this week, uh, Thursday night, October 14th at six o'clock via Zoom. And you can find more information uh, related to that meeting at the Housatonic Waterworks website, which is housatonicwater.com. And I will make a note uh, for myself now to try to share that information on our Facebook page and Instagram pages so that we can get that, uh, that message out more widely. And that's all I have, Steve. Thank you. So just to keep everyone up to date, there are 29 attendees and six panelists for a total of 35 people on the line. Please raise your hand if you would like to speak and we, um, I will recognize you. Suzanne Fowl. Hi, can you hear me? We can. But Suzanne or Susie Fowl, 40 Kirk Street in Housatonic. Thank you. Um, I wasn't expecting you to get called on first because I have questions that I thought might get answered uh, in the interim. But when you said to raise your hand, I thought I better raise my hand. I, <laughs> I appreciate that. I thought I was just getting in line. Um, you were quick. But I'll go ahead and ask my questions. And um, I apologize if any of these are obvious um, or that I could maybe find the answers on the website. Um, I'm wondering if water quality has been tested by an independent lab. I know the engineering studies did not involve um, water quality testing, didn't, didn't involve any redo of, of old tests. And I'm wondering if that was ever remedied or could, or could be remedied and if we could get some new quality tests by a, an independent lab, like maybe one that's not even in the Berkshires. Susie, just ask all your questions and I'm not sure we're gonna answer okay. them all tonight, so but I'm we gonna, will get you answers. I'm gonna log in that question. Um, and part of that question is based on the, um, I'm not sure if you guys are aware of the Environmental Working Group, ewg.org. Uh, they have, they test a lot of municipal water supplies and they report it on their website, whose tonic water works is on there and it, and it passes the EPA safety standards, but the EPA safety standards aren't as high as what environmental working group would recommend. So it lists some of the uh, contaminants that, that our water has. Um, it's really handy, environmental working group, and it's their municipal water database. You can search by zip code. Um, and then speaking of data, I'm wondering if anybody is the engineering firms um, perhaps, or anyone is collecting data on where the brown water is? Like, can we, are we gathering data that eventually gives us a map that would might show us, oh, it's almost always brown in this pocket of Housatonic and it's almost always clear in this part of Housatonic. I mean, ideally, Houstonic Waterworks would be doing that because that would be part of their job to sort of locate the problems. But do we know if anybody's collecting that kind of data? Okay, so I guess logging in questions. Um, yeah, we're, we're just gonna log those all in. If we don't have okay. the answers, we'll get them, get them to you. One more question is, um, and I'm not arguing with this at all, but I'm wondering why acquiring the system would need to go before town meeting, not because I'm arguing, I'm just wondering what is the rule that requires it to go before town meeting? Is it just a matter of how much money is being spent or um, yeah, just what's the trigger there? We can answer that one. Mark, go ahead. Sure, uh, so that uh, we would need to have an appropriation from town meeting 
first and foremost, but it would also require uh, the acquisition of, of real estate, which is a town meeting approval. Okay, so any amount, any real estate acquisition, large or small. Okay, got it. Yeah, purchase and uh, purchase would always be a town meeting approval. And it doesn't even matter where the money comes from. It's just the fact that it's a real estate transaction. That's correct. And then your, your other three questions, I think, are, are excellent questions. And I will get some clarification from DEP on all three. Thank you very much. Thanks for everything you guys are doing. Thanks, Susie. Appreciate it. Next one is Dave and Georgine. Hi, Dave Long, 304 North Plain Road, who's tonic? Can you hear me? Yes. Great. So having grown up in Housatonic, We lost you there. Dave, just unmute yourself. That wasn't an option a second ago. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, having grown up in Housatonic, like most people in Housatonic, you know, we've I've had a relationship with the water quality going up and down, and the causes have always changed and always been different. And, uh, you know, so it is a little hard to think that this is just the one problem. And if we fix this, then we won't continue to have water quality issues, given a lot of things. But my primary concerns really come down to these two things. First is when I read the letter that Houstonic Water just distributed to all of its customers, basically it was implying that, you know, most of this water, the, the money that would be spent uh, on renovating the water system would be going to a, a Coke membrane filtration system. Well, I'm not sure that most people in Houstonic would be very happy about giving Charles Koch $30 million. And, and you know what is the scope? How much does that filtration cost? And just because the consultant recommended that unit, when there's plenty of other companies that make very high quality um, water filtration systems, many of them uh, win major international uh, water uh, environmental uh, awards. I mean, are we really, is, is the choice for Housatonic that you either get clean water by giving Coke money or we live with dirty water? I mean, because that's kind of the way the letter presented the way that the company was going forward. And, you know, it worries me that the town of Great Barrington will take on, you know, what, you know, what the baggage that comes with that decision if we were to buy it. The second part of this is kind of related to that is that some of this is beginning to feel an awful lot like the closing of the dump, where in the end, the town basically bought for good money, the dump, turned it into a transfer station and indemnified Fred from, from any of the choices that he made, getting that dump in place and running it for the town. So, it's a little hard to sort of say, okay, now we're going to take on another huge debt from a large piece of infrastructure um, that Fred has developed for, you know, as a municipal system, essentially, and then left the broken pieces for the town to pick up. Um, it seems to me that any kind of deal between Fred and the town of Great Barrington has to sort of understand the culpability and the fact that you know, that water system now is incredibly devalued because of this problem and, and the capital costs it would take to fix the problem. Um, so I don't know about anyone else in this in Housatonic, but I don't have a huge appetite to basically bail that out um, given multiple histories. So, I mean, that, that's basically what I came here to say. Um, I mean, in all due respect, you know, I've grown up with Fred. I, you know, Fred was actually something of a hero to me growing up because he could do anything. 
him and Jack Cook and all these guys were, they could make things happen out of thin air. And, you know, I appreciate Fred's ability to do that. And, and Jim, you know, I grew up, we went to school together. And, you know, a lot of that sort of emotional stuff is tied to most of us who grew up here and who's tied. <laughs> um, and so these are these are tough questions and it, it, it's tough to push the, the, the hard realities of what the proposition is really saying. Thanks, so, Dave, I appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Really appreciate it. Elizabeth Rockefeller. Yes, I'm Elizabeth Rockefeller, 284 Park Street. My question is that throughout all of this, this past summer, which has been the worst I have ever seen in the 50 <coughs> years of living in Housatonic, a majority of the customers pay taxes to Great Barrington, and yet there didn't seem to be any relief offered by bottled water or um, anything to help the Housatonic residents get through the mundane uh, process of water, drinking water, cooking water, and neither um, had Housatonic water done that at all either. No relief. The only relief was Taft Farms offering his well to give us fresh, clean water. And my other question is, this whole process at this point seems to be blamed on manganese. But what about the rust-like residue? Mark, you have my sample there. I have two more on my back porch. Rust-like residue on the, at the bottom that has settled down from the water samples. Um, I believe this is from the aging pipes, which were supposed to be uh, replaced and haven't been replaced by Housatonic water. And yet we still have, there are two main problems. Manganese, okay, if this big solution, the, the filtration system fixes that, we still have this residue at the bottom of the water because uh, the pipes haven't been dealt with. Um, those are my two questions. So I'll, for the board, I'll answer one of them. Part of what we're looking into now is some sort of relief. It didn't happen over the summer, but we are looking, that's what Mark was a little bit talking about in his presentation is how can we offer relief and what kind of relief um, that, that really means something. Um, you know, providing one set of filters when people would have to have them installed and maybe replaced every month probably isn't substantial relief. So we're, we, we are looking into what kind of relief we can provide. Um, so, and, and the other question is one that the experts are gonna have to look at because um, I'm not going to tell you that getting rid of manganese is going to get rid of all your problems. So I think it's it's a it's a good observation, and we're aware of it. Thank you, Steve. You're welcome, Amelia Berg. Yes, can you hear me? We can. Okay, thank you. This is Amelia Berg, 28 Kirk Street. And wondering if um, uh, I was not clear, is the select board involved with the meeting on Thursday? No, that meeting is a private meeting called by an informational meeting by the Housatonic Waterworks. Okay, so no one from the select board will be able to attend? Well, I'm not saying we won't attend. Oh, so, okay. So, but we, we're not part of that. It's not our meeting. We have yeah. no, no, nothing to do with the content. And as interested observers, it's possible, uh, depending yeah. on our schedule. Okay, great. I, I, it would be great if someone could be there, um, but thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? There we go. Pat Hollenbeck. Thank you, Steve. Uh, Pat up. Hollenbeck, 1075 Main Street, Housatonic. I guess I just have a couple questions. Uh, what are we paying for fire hydrants, to use the fire hydrants? And I guess the second question is why? And then um, we, we know there's problems. Some people that are going to go to sleep tonight in Housatonic are going to near, near hydrants that may or may not have enough adequate water to it. 
So I think on top of everything else being discussed, this has got to really move to the front, the front burner here. And it, here's a suggestion. I don't know if this works, but to me, it would be as a, a safety stopgap measure. What if um, Housatonic Waterworks uh, rented a couple water tankers, even if they use some of the water in Cook's garage, and just store those tankers somewhere in Housatonic um, that are ready to go if, if there's a fire? I mean, we need a, another plan here. Uh, this, this, is, this is really awful. And I know the, the color of the water, the questions about the water is important, but if there's not enough water when we need it, it's a matter of safety of the fire workers, the firemen working at, at a fire, and the people sl asleep in those houses. So uh, I'd like to just hear some uh, expanded discussion of, about what I think is the most important issue about this, one that we could somehow fix in, in, in it, it, rather than long-term problems. That's it. Thanks. Thanks, Pat. And that, that is a, a good point that we have not brought up. I know Chief Berger's on the line. I don't know if, Mark, you want him to speak or you want to speak to it or you want to put it on our list. Uh, yeah, I'd be happy to have Chief Berger uh, provide the fire protection uh, point of view here. But uh, while we're uh, promoting him, I did, just wanted to address uh, Patrick's question relative to the cost of uh, hydrant rentals. And that number uh, is about four, just under $45,000 per year. Chief Berger, if you want to add anything to that. I... Yes. Um, so I guess to answer the first question as to why are we paying for the hydrants, um, because the, the, the question isn't so much, do they work or do they not work? Um, the hydrants should work, um, operate correctly. They do get flushed and tested every year. And um, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, they replaced a couple that uh, weren't working. Um, with regards to the water flow coming out of them, any water is way better than nothing. Um, the majority of house fires, um, if we get there quickly enough, uh, we can easily put them out with uh, 500 gallons a minute, which is what's coming out of uh, the hydrants in the, uh, the, the, on the main roads in town. Um, so to not pay for them and to not have the right to use them um, would be a absolutely uh, horrible safety um, problem for Housatonic. Um, so that's the answer to the first question as to why we pay for them. The second one is uh, that um, uh, tankers that are designed for fire protection cost, uh, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars, um, five hundred thousand dollars plus generally. Um, so buying a few of those isn't very cheap, and uh, we do have plans in place. Um, we call mutual aid. Our mutual aid companies have tankers. Um, and uh, we also have plans of laying supply lines to the river and all different kinds of things. This is a challenge that we have struggled with in Housatonic for uh, um, decades. Um, the lower flows there are nothing, uh, nothing new, nothing has dramatically changed with the system to uh, make it worse right now. And uh, so we do have plans in place. Um, you know, uh, us having firefighters available to respond to emergencies is extremely challenging. Um, and I can tell you that we don't have extra people to pick up tankers at uh, Cook's Garage or anything like that. So we do have plans in place. Um, the majority of fires uh, we handle with the uh, water that we carry on our first due engine um, and uh, hydrants nearby are extremely helpful. Um, if a fire gets out of control in some places in town, um, yes, what's in the hydrants is not adequate for those situations. Thankfully, we have avoided those. It's one of the reasons it's important to have a uh, good fire department with uh, quick responses. Um, so I hope that answers uh, most of your questions there. Thank you, Chief. Appreciate that. Anyone else? Dan Bailey. Question I have is regarding um, potential financing, just a um, hypothetical, of course, obviously, if the town were to 
purchase it. Um, the in some the rough numbers were for infrastructure were something around thirty million. Um, is that correct? Yes. Okay. And then the assessed value of the um, company itself was somewhere around five. Is that what I understand? Correct. Okay. So we're looking at thirty-five. If the town were to purchase it for forty million, ten for the business portion of it, and 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 well, purchase it for ten million, and then do a um, thirty or thirty-five million dollar capital um, acquisition. How would that how would that affect the, affect the tax rate? In other words, if if thirty five million is borrowed over twenty years, that that's that doesn't turn out to be a lot, right? Dan, I, I think your mind is working right, but I think your mind is working different than mine, which is that if the town was able to acquire it, I believe that we will be able to get either federal or state money. Not all thirty million, not all. 5 million, and those are hypothetical numbers. Please don't print those. I, I, we've had some assurance that there will be a possibility of state money available for at least part of this. So although you're right that 30 million over 20 years it, you know, it, is doable, I don't believe that this town will ever have to borrow that much money to, to do this. And it will be a phased in project anyways, as you know, you understand that better than I do. Right. I was just looking for worst case scenario to try to give some get some sense or so people could start getting some sense that, yeah, it sounds awful, but maybe it's not as dire as people think is is big a hit. Obviously, the bigger hurdle would be getting, you know, the rest of Great Barrington to say yes to it. But I think if those numbers are out there showing actually what, you know, it's not a huge hit to people um, for what we're actually getting, which is clean potable drinking water, um, I think it, it, it might help that process along if people actually could see those figures. So I think like, yeah. just yeah. a quick suggestion at some point, maybe, maybe you guys could run some hypotheticals for people, um, you, know, it, you know, if however that breaks out. Worst case yeah. scenario, not including any kind of state or federal funding, just so people have a better idea of what the numbers actually would be. Yeah, and some of that is in some of the studies. Um, if you dig deep into the studies that they are in there, there are some numbers for both Gray Barrington and Housatonic if we were to merge the two. So there, there are some numbers already in there. And as we get closer to possibilities, we will continue to do that. All right, thank you very much. Thanks, Dan. Anyone else? Jim Stark. I think uh, Susie's suggestion of- Just give me uh, your address, please, Jim. I'm sorry, 1099 Main Street. Thank you. Uh, uh, the suggestion of finding out where the dirty water is, is excellent. I don't think you're gonna get it from the DEP, uh, Mark, but if, if, uh, if someone were to send out questionnaires or somehow do a canvassing of the residents, that information could be, could be had. Uh, we, we tried the, the water company and, and they weren't able to tell us. We, um, we will look into that. I think your idea is a good one, Chip. All right, the, thank you. The, um, the, finance, the, the options that Mark mentioned earlier, I, I don't think those are the only options. Um, but um, maybe that's that's something to think about further down, further on. The, the uh, options could be unlimited. Those were the ones that we've looked at. Yeah. So. Okay. All right. Uh, that's all I can think of right now. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. I appreciate it. Thank you. Anyone else? Ann. Hi, Steve, Ann O'Dwyer, 26 Kirk Street, Housatonic. Um, and I think my question is pretty simple. I'm, where on the website are all these reports? I'm trying to find them and I just, can't, I'm searching the website and I can't find where it is on the website. And if you go to the select board page on our website, 
Oh, the select board page. Yeah, on the left side, there's a menu, and one of those options is Housatonic Waterworks information. Okay. okay, great. Thank you. Thanks, Ann. Anyone else? Um, I, Dave, is this you again? It is. And I'll just be quick. I just wanted to point out something that was made clear in the engineering report, which was that basically all of the water has a certain saturation of, of manganese in it. It has to do with how, the, how frequently the water moves through and how it's aerated. So where you're gonna have dirty water in town is constantly gonna be changing based on use, use patterns. So there's clearly some spots that are sore because they're, they get very, relatively low volumes compared to other areas and it might, would be nice to know where they are. But, you know, the fact is, you know, you look at the Facebook for Housatonic and, uh, you know, people will all of a sudden be shocked. It's their neighborhood. Everyone is affected at some point, depending on what the usage pattern is. And that's not going to get any better. Thank you, Dave. I mean, is what the engineer said. But that's it. Thank you. Thank you. The last time I let someone speak twice, I got in trouble for it. Uh, this time I didn't. It was a good point, Dave. Anyone else? I really appreciate everyone coming out tonight. And um, we will have more of these meetings. And as we get more information, we will provide it to the public. And it's a two-way street. We, we want you to talk to the select board, to talk to the town manager. If you have information that, that you want, questions answered, we will be glad to help you with it. Um, and just for those of you who aren't aware of it, on our every regular meeting of the select board on the agenda is Housatonic Waterworks. So sometimes the town manager will have a lot of information, sometimes very little. But if you ever want to just join us at the beginning of the meeting and listen, that's where the information will be. Um, this, this is going to be an ongoing um, topic for a while now, and we want to keep you updated. So we appreciate everyone coming out tonight. Is there anyone else who wants to speak about anything? Which is kind of, I'm not ready for select board, Lee, I will. Um, let's go to um, select, even though it's on the agenda, I'm going to select board's announcements or statements because we always go there. Um, Garfield, anything? Hold on to that, Garfield. Someone did raise their hand and I don't want to leave anyone out of this. Um, Mr. Diaz, Dagan, Diaz. Just unmute yourself. You're muted. Garfield, I'll go to you and I'll come back to him once he gets unmuted. Do you have anything? I had just a clarification, if I remember correctly, or, or correct me if I'm wrong, I thought even with an acquisition and whatnot, it's still going to take two to four years to get clean water. Uh, uh, it's, it's not going to happen overnight. You are correct. That sounds like a problem still. This problem we can't do much about. It's just engineering. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Eric? Uh, yes, thanks, Steve. Um, I just want to say, as a select board member and, uh, and a customer of uh, Houstonic Waterworks, that uh, I feel I'm happy that... Uh, this has been on the agenda. I, I'm feeling good that uh, it does seem like there's motivation and um, I feel we're moving uh, slowly, but in the right direction. So happy that uh, we had uh, 40 something people coming out tonight to listen. Um, happy to hear the reports. And I just hope that uh, we keep the 
pedal on the um, keep the gas push down here and keep this moving. And um, in, in the long sense, I know we talked about town meeting, but I just think um, I know if my neighbors five, 10 miles away uh, were getting brown water, I would be very concerned and expect to have to do something as my neighbor to help them. So I keep hearing little chirps of people uh, sounding doubtful that Great Barrington, the residents five, eight miles away, our neighbors uh, wouldn't give a lending hand here. So uh, just, just wanted to put that out there. So, but uh, I'm glad this is happening. Glad to be involved. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Ed? Uh, yeah, th <clears throat> excuse me. Thank you. Um, uh, thank you to everybody who, who showed up and spoke. But I want to I want to um, say that I don't think anyone on the select board is looking at this as a Housatonic versus Great Barrington problem. This is citizens having a problem with their water. Um, and I just want to echo what Eric said. I also assume when it gets to town meeting and the best uh, idea we come up with to solve this, um, people will be thinking of us as one town. Um, and I think coming from the board, I think we should keep encouraging that kind of talk. So thank you. Thanks, Ed. Feel better. Lee? Uh, thank you. Uh, one thing I'd like to reiterate is that it's one thing that came from the meetings that we've been having um, is the importance of customers that are having issues with their water to directly contact Housatonic uh, Waterworks and file their complaint. Um, what it uh, came to be is that um, we weren't, uh, it seemed that they weren't getting as many complaints as we assumed they were. And so I just wanna stress how very, very important for, you, for the customers that are affected to, to write to uh, HousatonicWater at gmail.com and log their complaints and make sure that they have a record of it. It's very, very important um, that uh, the complaints go directly to Housatonic Waterworks um, because we don't want to um, put them off the hook. I think it's really, really important that people realize that, um, you know, where the problem is coming from and that any complaints should go directly to them and obviously to us because we are working on, we're working very, very hard to, to rectify this, um, this problem, but just to make sure that you do file your complaints um, directly and keep a log of the complaints to the Housatonic Waterworks. Thank you. Thanks, Lee. Uh, I think I've spoken enough. Um, media time. Seeing no one, thank you everyone for coming out tonight. We appreciate that. And um, meeting by, is adjourned by unanimous consent. Thank you very much. Thank you.